A problem doesn't have to be life-changing to be worth solving, and sometimes simply deciding on something tasty for lunch or supper can be quite a head-scratcher. Fortunately, Chef Rev Batoi is on hand with some fresh ideas on a spring theme. It's a quaint little place with a touch of whimsy, and it's where you'll find Chef Rev Batoi doing what he loves most, transforming fresh ingredients into bite-sized explosions of flavour. Talent and passion seems to be the recipe for success when it comes to Rev Batoi, or Chef Rev as he's affectionately known. He heads up the increasingly popular Pop-Up Society restaurant in Durban, which is known for turning foodie dreams into reality with its vibrant menu and Instagram-worthy milkshakes. I'm excited to meet this culinary mastermind and find out what tantalizes his taste buds. Rev began his career in the hospitality recruitment field before following his instincts to become a chef and he's never looked back. Chef Rev, so lovely to meet you. Yay, thank you very much for joining us. Now, as a self-proclaimed foodie, I love meeting other foodies. Where did your love for food begin? My love for food began where everyone else's did, at home with my mom and our entire family cooked. It wasn't just a matter of my mom cooking or my grandmother cooking. It was my dad and my sister and my brother and our entire family lives revolved around cooking. What inspires you in the kitchen? I'm inspired by the sights and sounds of everything around me. Everything excites me and I'm able to conjure up the most delicious recipes and food combinations just by simply looking at a lemon, just by simply looking at a piece of pomegranate. Well, this table looks exquisite. What's in the menu today? So today we've taken elements from our menu past and present and we are creating a tapas board. So something light and effervescent and something to get your taste buds tingling. So what's first? So this will become your best friend. This is coconut cream and that's the base of our marinade. And that's all you need. It's such a powerful, power pack, simple ingredient that nature has to offer. And it's all you need to make the base of a perfect marinade and it goes perfectly complementary with chicken. So we're gonna start by putting in some coconut cream. You can buy coconut cream from a store or you can try it with coconut milk and reduce it on the stove. But what I've done is I've actually taken some coconut cream and some rosemary and I've combined it. The longer the chicken sits in the marinade, the better. So I always say, try and get this done the night before. So Karishma, while that's cooking, we're gonna make a really fresh and delicious chicken satay sauce to go with our coconut cream chicken. This is a really simple chili sauce made with three simple ingredients. What we've done is we've manually ground chili, masala, and oil, and we've placed it on the stove for about five to 10 minutes until it gets to this consistency. And then we add in our spring onion. What I find with the sesame seeds is it's always best to toast it because the heat releases the oils that nuts have to offer. And then the final ingredient is peanut butter. And what we've actually done is we've created our own take on the ancient Balinese chicken satay. Can I have a taste? Yes. That is divine. Okay. Oh, Krishma, it looks like our skewers are ready to be turned. Let's put down our first element of our tapas board. So what we're doing now is we're creating a crunchy Asian slaw to tie everything together. So to begin, we're gonna start off with crunchy red cabbage with some shredded carrots. Then we're gonna add a pinch of sesame seeds and spring onion. And to tie everything together, we've got some honey. So what I try and do is at the restaurant, we try and use raw organic honey, which is obviously better for the environment and it tastes much better than the pouring syrup honey. And now Karishma, it's time to add our coriander. And you break this up. It's gonna be a really rustic Asian crunchy slaw. Because a lot of people clean out the stalks, but the goodness is in the stalks, be it with coriander or parsley. I always try and chop it in just for extra crunchiness and extra texture. Well, coriander is one of my favorite ingredients, so anything with coriander is amazing. And the great thing about coriander is that it's available all year round. And then we're gonna add some sesame seeds for extra crunch. Oh, this looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and place that on your tapas board. 
So here we have our ground chickpeas with our favorite herbs and spices. And what we've actually added in is fresh coriander, ground cumin, we've added in salt and pepper, and I add in a pinch of paprika or masala to add that extra flavor base with a little bit of a bite. You can also add this to a pita bread, you could add it to a roti wrap, or you could eat it just with a simple peanut butter dip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it to really high heat. So you're essentially creating a fat frying environment that is the perfect heat temperature for the perfect crunchy tapas board, fluffle ball. Okay, Krishma, these are done. Beautifully golden brown. And the falafels, you can almost taste it. So up next is our centerpiece of our spring tapas board, which is our spicy calamari salad. I can't wait. To start, we're gonna add some oil to a hot pan, and then we're going to add some onions. And now we're gonna add our masala. So just a heap tablespoon should do trick, followed by a pinch of mustard seeds, and these begin to pop when it's ready. And then I really enjoy cooking with aniseed, which is a very rich, fragrant flavor. You might not necessarily like it, so this is completely optional. And then to tie it into Durban, we're gonna add a little bit of dry chili. Okay, and now we're gonna add some garlic. So now we're gonna give that a stir, and we're gonna release all the flavors from the garlic. And then we're going to add the turmeric. And now that the heat releases all the flavor and ties everything together, we're gonna add the star of the show, the calamari, to our medium heat. And we're gonna lightly coat everything that's turned into brown. We're gonna give that a nice, lovely brown, reddish hue. That looks beautiful. And the other great thing about calamari is that it cooks really quickly. So this is our lettuce that's combined with really unique lettuce leaves. So I've used different herbs, beetroot, leaves, and whatever I could find in spring. And it's a really unfussy, delicious, fresh and crunchy salad. Please, can you help me with salt and pepper? Of course. And you give that a good, generous grind. And the great thing about sea salt, it's really light and adds a great texture. Is that good? Yes, perfect. And then can we add some pepper, please? Of course. And again, we use ground black pepper. Perfect. Lovely. How do you know when the calamari is cooked? I always take a spoon and if it cuts through with ease, it's cooked. And what we're going to do now is you want to try and scoop all the juices into it. And instead of using a salad dressing, we're going to use the gravy or the sauce from the calamari salad. I love that idea. You know, my dad always said that this is the best part of the pot. And you know what, Karishma? Your dad was exactly right. To finish off this great dish, we're going to add some fresh coriander. And Karishma, that completes our spring tapas board. Karishma, you'd never believe what's underneath here. What? Tell me. Homemade strawberry ice cream. Look how beautiful that looks. We're going to start building our very own fruit shake. Okay, so how much ice cream do you want in there? We want to give it a nice flavoring of strawberry. So I'm going to scoop quite a bit in there. And remember, we're going to add more cream or milk into it to give it more of a fluid consistency. And then you're going to give it a little taste. I always say in cooking, try and use your five senses. So with this one, we're going to give it a nice little mm. And now to add to that mm, we are now going to make our own chocolate ganache. And then we add it to our freak shake and we give that a nice little stir. So that heightens the flavor of the fruit shake. And Karishma, the best part about this is that it's topped with a donut. So let's go ahead and put that on top while we build a shake. Please, can you pass me that lovely canister? Of course, there we go. So Karishma, you want to give this a nice, generous helping because this is going to create the base of our fun tray. And if you look down here, we've got a wafer. So this is where you get to decorate with all the ingredients. That is your favorite. So much fun. And the best thing about this is that there isn't any right or wrong recipe, so you can do whatever you like. And now, Karishma, is the moment of truth. It's time to work our magic. Mm. That is so delicious. Riv, it's been such a treat cooking with you and getting to know you today. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really glad you enjoyed our time together. Cheers.